Johnny, get your gun, get your gun, get your gun. Take it on the run, on the run, on the run. Hear them calling you. And Hello, and welcome to Frontline Rejects. Today we're talking about the Savage Axis, a rifle that I've been interested in getting my hands on for some time. Now, I've been curious about this rifle because it always seemed like such a good deal. For You could pick one up for in between three to five hundred bucks, and in that price range it would often come with the cheap optic included. Until now, I've never quite had enough of a reason to go buy one, but we've recently had several requests on the channel to test out bullets in the 6.5 category for our expansion testing videos, so I went ahead and picked one up. As mentioned, this rifle is chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor, and I picked it up at Walmart for $316, which I feel like is a pretty good deal because it's in stainless steel and it came with the AccuTrigger, a feature I had not been expecting. Now, I've read and watched a lot of different reviews on this rifle, and they're a mixed bag. Some people love them, and other people, not so much. The general consensus seems to be that some of these come in awesome condition and are great shooters, and some are straight lemons. I think this is understandable considering the price class that this rifle occupies. To get the best out of this rifle, before we take it out, I decided to make a few upgrades. And I thought it would be interesting for all of y'all who are considering getting a rifle in this price class to see what we did in case you decide to do something similar. At the end of this video, we'll go over the cost of components as well as the results for the group sizes that we get. The first thing we'll be doing is adding a single piece optics rail specifically a Picatinny rail from EGW. We'll also add a hard Kydex cheek riser, as well as a cheap neoprene sling. Also, because the stock seems to be a little flimsy near the barrel, we'll be removing some material from within the stock to ensure that it doesn't come into contact with the barrel at all. We'll be adjusting the trigger to a crisp 2.5 pounds, and I do want to point out that had this not come with the AccuTrigger, we'd probably be installing a Timney trigger instead. After that, we'll be installing Vortex Pro rings, as well as a Leupold VX Freedom 3 to 9 by 40. Thanks for watching. Let's get started. We're all done in the shop, rifle's ready to go, let's head out to the range and shoot some groups. As we begin shooting here, I just want to mention that prior to this we had fired 8 rounds total. I fired 7 rounds to zero the gun, and Andreas fired 1 for practice. For this first group, the rifle had been resting for about 15 minutes while we were filming some other stuff, so this group was out of a cold barrel.
The second group, as you can see, is shot by Andreas, and he shot this group directly after I did, so the barrel was warm. We let the barrel rest for in between 15 to 20 minutes before our third group, and this time Andreas went first. Following his cold board group, I shot the fourth and last group immediately after him. As we get into an examination of our groups here, I want to mention again that I only put seven rounds to this rifle and Andreas only one. The ammunition we used was 120 grain HPBT hand loads and each group was a four shot group. The first group is mine, shot on a cold bore and the overall spread on center is 0.836 of an inch, or 0.88 MOA. The second group is Andreas' warm group at 1.807 inches, or 1.89 MOA. The third group is Andreas' cold group, which returned a measurement of 0.522 of an inch, or 0.55 MOA. The last group is mine, shot warm, and has a 1.392 inch spread, or 1.46 MOA. Now we'll get into a cost breakdown using our handy dandy Excel sheet. And at the top, you'll see the item name and cost. Tax was calculated at 10.1%, giving us our total cost. We've only included the bare essentials in the cost analysis of the rifle. And you'll notice the rings and optic are not included, as there are a lot of options available for individual shooters, and you could spend a lot less or a lot more. Also, we had had the scope and rings lying around from a previous project. We did not purchase them recently, so our price paid is not accurate. I did, however, find the current fair market value of the equivalent for the optic and rings, and this is provided in the upper right-hand box. In a separate box, we have also included what a Timney trigger would have cost. If the AccuTrigger hadn't come installed in this rifle, we would have purchased a Timney. To summarize, we bought a bare-bones Savage Axis for $316, and made a few modifications to it to try and get the best accuracy out of it that we could. And we did. Our best four shot group was just over half an inch, which is pretty good for a budget rifle. Also, we discovered that groups fired by both Andreas and I opened up quite significantly when the barrel was warm. This could be a result of other factors and does merit further testing before any conclusive result can be reached. We're going to be doing some longer range accuracy and load development with this rifle in the future so stay tuned for that. And of course, those of you who follow our expansion series, thank you. We'll see this rifle in a few upcoming videos. Thanks for joining us today. And if you like the content, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.